Uh, we have now had movement on the rules that Ukrainians have to play by as they use those weapons supplied by NATO member countries, but they're only allowed to use them to strike targets in the Kharkiv region. You've been pushing uh, for more than that. Do you, do you think that the, that relaxation in rules goes far enough? Different allies have uh, imposed uh, different uh, types of restrictions, and uh, some allies have imposed no restrictions uh, at all uh, on the use of weapons they have donated to, uh, to Ukraine. Uh, I welcome that uh, uh, some allies have now uh, uh, loosened or, or reduced uh, uh, the restrictions uh, they, uh, they have on weapons delivered to Ukraine, because that will help the Ukrainians to defend themselves. Uh, and uh, and uh, we need to remember what this is. This is, uh, this is a, a, a war of aggression conducted by Russia, and of course Ukraine has the right to defend themselves, and that includes also hitting legitimate military targets uh, inside uh, Russia. The key thing, though, is, is America is allowing Ukraine finally now to strike targets, but only uh, in the Kharkiv region. Do you think you'd like to see more than that? The Ukrainians certainly would like to see the ability to strike deeper into Russia. Do you understand their point of view? Ukraine has already been able to strike deep into uh, Russia. Uh, they have their own weapons they have uh, produced. And as I said, some allies have not uh, imposed uh, any restrictions on the use of the weapons they have. Uh, but the deliver. Americans, we'd so like to see them allowed... ...between uh, allies. But, I, but the point is that uh, some of those allies that had restrictions have now um, uh, um, yeah, reduced the, the, uh, the, the magnitude of those restrictions, enabling the Ukrainians to do what is most urgent, and that is to protect themselves against the attacks which are now launched from uh, Russian territory, because now the front line and the borderline is more or less the same uh, in the north, where Russia has opened a new front, uh, attacking uh, Kharkiv, and uh, the decisions made by allies over the last few days have helped or will help the Ukrainians to uh, repel uh, those attacks. Just to push you on that before we move forward, though, uh, would you like to see the Americans relaxing the rules further, particularly specifically on their weapons, so the Ukrainians could strike deeper with those weapons beyond the Kharkiv region? So we had good discussions on this at the NATO Foreign Ministerial meeting uh, last week in uh, Prague. I welcome the decisions that have been made by some allies over the last uh, days. I will not go into uh, uh, specific or give uh, recommendations to specific allies uh, uh, on TV. We have good internal uh, considerations, uh, deliberations on these issues in NATO. Just talking about what's happening in the Kharkiv region now, how worried are you by these advances the Russians have made in the last few weeks? The difficult, there is a difficult situation on the battlefield, and we have seen the Ukrainians, oh, sorry, the Russians, uh, making some marginal uh, gains. But we don't expect any major uh, breakthrough. Wars are, of course, always uh, difficult to uh, predict. But so far, we haven't seen any concentration of forces on the Russian side that uh, will enable them to have a major breakthrough. Uh, but it uh, it demonstrates that. Uh, the need for us to step up our support. Uh, over the last months, there have been some serious delays in support from uh, NATO allies. The US spent six months agreeing a new package for uh, Ukraine, and some European allies have not been able to deliver what they have promised. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we now are uh, addressing in NATO how we can uh, give NATO a bigger role in coordinating support for Ukraine and also agree a multi-year financial pledge, so we have more predictability, uh, more sustainability and more accountability when it comes to supporting Ukraine uh, to ensure that we don't have the same delays and gaps in supply uh, for Ukraine as we have seen over the last months. Yeah, can you explain further about that? Because uh, the latest research from Bain and, and company and other consultancies seems to show that the Ukrainians or the, the West are getting and refurbishing shells about the third of the speed of the Russians, that the Russians are developing, uh, making and refurbishing artillery shells at three times the speed that the West can supply them to the Ukrainians. Why is NATO, with all its military and economic might, so slow? It's correct that Russia has been able to build up their defence industry faster than we uh, expected, and it's correct that uh, NATO allies have uh, 
spent more time than they should in ramping up uh, our production. Uh, and that reflects that after the end of the Cold War, we actually built down our defense industry. Now this is changing. Uh, the United Kingdom all the NATO allies are uh, uh, increasing the capacity to produce uh, ammunition uh, uh, weapons. Uh, we have the United States, which have over the last months doubled uh, its uh, capacity to produce uh, 155 uh, standard ammunition. And uh, within not so long time, we'll produce roughly 100,000 per uh, month. So this is really changing, and therefore also the flow of ammunition into Ukraine has uh, increased over the last uh, weeks. Uh, on top of that, we also have the Czech-led initiative, which was addressed also at the NATO uh, meeting in Prague last week, where Czech has coordinated um, uh, the procurement of ammunition from outside uh, uh, NATO allies, and that is also now actually leading to concrete delivery. So things are really moving in the right direction, but you're right, it took too long time. You've always talked very diplomatically uh, about this. You're, but behind that diplomatic demeanour, one suspects there's a kind of frustration about how behind the curve the West is over this and how much ahead of the game the Russians seem to be. How frustrating has that been for you in your time in office? I think we need to remind ourselves of how this war started. Uh, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine on the 24th of February and most experts and uh, President Putin himself, he thought that he was going to take control over Kiev within days and the rest of Ukraine within weeks. That didn't happen. Uh, the Ukrainians have actually been able to liberate 50% of the territory that Russia occupied at the beginning of the war. They have been able to uh, sink a, a significant number of uh, Russian uh, naval ships in the Black Sea, opening, opening up a corridor uh, in the Black Sea. And they've been able to uh, uh, conduct deep strikes against uh, Russian military capabilities, inflicting heavy losses on uh, the Russian armed forces. So uh, Russia and President Putin made a big mistake by underestimating the Ukrainians, but also underestimating the, uh, the willingness, the commitment of NATO allies to support uh, Ukraine. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, the main issue in this war is about whether Ukraine will prevail as a sovereign independent nation that can be member of NATO, member of the European Union. Uh, and the reality is that uh, Ukraine will prevail because NATO allies are now stepping up our support and we are committing to a more long term predictable uh, support. And therefore, uh, this is a big strategic mistake uh, for Putin. He has not achieved his main goal to control Ukraine. A lot of concern about uh, Donald Trump winning the uh, upcoming American election. If he does so uh, and he pulls America out of NATO, can the European end of NATO continue to support Ukraine or will Russia win this conflict? I'm absolutely confident that uh, both uh, uh, European allies and the United States uh, will continue to support Ukraine because it is in our uh, security interest to support uh, uh, Ukraine. And therefore, I expect also the US to do so, uh, regardless of the outcome of uh, the, uh, the elections. Um, because we have to understand that if President Putin wins uh, in Ukraine, it's a, a not only a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but it will send a message to President Putin uh, that uh, when he uses military force, when he violates international law, he gets what he wants. That will make the, uh, the world more dangerous and us more vulnerable. So therefore, it is in our security interest uh, to support uh, Ukraine, um, and therefore we uh, should do that also in the future. Mr. Scholtenberg, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Good luck with your remaining time in office. Thanks so much for having me.